Last time we did a bunch of stuff, but the important thing was these two lines. These two lines basically allow you to look up and down. Okay, right, so at notthefuture.com slash howtocode slash 3dy, uh, we got this. I went and tried to fix the issues I'm having here with uh, the polygons not appearing in the right order, the hidden objects problem. Um, and the other one is when you like look down, like things start disappearing. Like if you're too close to it, things disappear. Uh, so if you want to vote, go to the source code. Right clicking doesn't actually work here, so you have to press Control U, and then that brings us to the source code where we can copy it. Uh, so one thing I realized is that what I'm using to sort the order to draw the polygons in is the average translated Z value, as I call it, which is kind of the distance to the polygon, but it takes direction into account. So this is a different value than this. If you're, if you're looking straight on, it's a different value than looking to the side. And that's not good because what order the polygons are drawn in really shouldn't make a difference depending on what direction you're looking in. So instead of using the translated Z value, we're just gonna find the absolute distance to the polygon. So let me run through the differences here. So first off, I guess I'm putting the player's position uh, into an indexable value. Right, and that's the same thing here. We're just putting them into indexable positions so that way it makes doing for loops easier. And then we are have a new function here, find quadrilateral midpoint. Right, so we give it the, all the points, the quadrilateral, and it just finds the midpoint of those. And I'll, I'll go look at that function in a second. I think midpoint here is the center point of the quadrilateral just because I need some point of the quadrilateral to reference where it's being drawn from. And um, the reason for this whole quad midpoint is is because it makes more sense to draw it from the midpoint than any one of the corners. Same as the logic b before is having an average TZ. And then we're finding the distance between the points, right, between the player and the center point of the quadrilateral, right? We're doing our precision round to get rid of the Z fighting problem. And then down here, when we go to dis to mid, right, we're using dis to mid instead of average TZ. So here's the find quad midpoint function and the dis between points function. They're both kind of standard 3D Euclidean math. Just add together all the points and then divide by the length and those are the midpoints, so that finds the center of the quadrilateral. Then distance between points, we find the difference between each component x, y, and z of the player and the quadrilateral. We square that, add them together, take the square root, basically kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, but in 3D space, and then that is what the distance between those points are. But what about this problem where when we look down, the object disappears. Well, the reason why this is happening is that the points at the top of the polygon, which are up here, um, when those go behind us, we don't want to draw them because we don't want to end up, you know, displaying things that are behind us in front of us, which is what would happen. So we need to find a way to prevent that. So I was saying, okay, well, why not just don't draw it if any of the points of the polygon are behind you? But then that has the problem when if the polygon gets too close to you, the whole thing disappears. So how do we fix that? Well, we're going to change the way that we do do draw. Um, so do draw tells us whether or not to draw the polygon. Normally we set it to true and then it's false if any of those points are behind us. But instead now do draw is false and we change this from an and to an or down here, which means that if all of the points are behind us, then don't draw it. Otherwise, right, if any single one of them is in front of us, draw it. But then, of course, even with this, we're still drawing, we're still going to be drawing things that are behind us. So how do we fix that? Well, here's our screen. Let's imagine that we have one of these objects real up close like this. So the problem is that we can't just delete the things that are off screen, but we need where their points would be uh, theoretically, 
because we want the lines to be right, but we don't want to actually draw them. There's probably a better fix to this for now, but essentially what we're going to do is if the points go like way off screen, we just expand them like a lot. And so the whole thing sort of distorts off screen way past where you would even be able to see them. What? Okay, let's just look at the code I wrote. So in the get 3D point function, so if the point we're looking at is behind us, then we multiply it by negative 100 in both the X and Y directions. And that's kind of confusing exactly like why this is working. I wonder if negative 1 just makes more sense though. No, no it doesn't. So this is kind of the new thing, and you can see that there's a lot of improvements. If I look up and down on this, things aren't breaking. If I get real up close to this, right, uh, there is some weirdness where when you turn all the way up, like it kind of flips and like it kind of is like you move forward. Uh, but besides that, it's mostly fine. And yeah, you can get like real up close to these things and they don't disappear. And so it mostly looks normal. There's some amount of problems um still right so like look right there uh it's not drawing the polygons in the right order but it's mostly working otherwise okay so why are we multiplying by negative 100 well to explain that um let's say we multiply by positive 100 why is the negative there uh well because this happens when it's not negative so basically what happens is when when the value is behind you, it's in the opposite place that it should be. Imagine this is our screen, okay, this is our point. When the point goes behind you, right, you'd expect it to still be over here, but it actually switches over to here. So while well, the thing should be going like this, it's going all the way over here, which is causing all that crisscrossing that you're seeing on the screen. So we multiply it by negative, and then it ends up on the right side of the screen, or the correct side of the screen. Okay, so that's why it's negative, but if we want to understand why it's such a large value, right, we're going to have to just draw everything all the time, right? So we're going to set do draw to true, and then let's set this value to negative two, or, or even just negative one, just to see kind of what happens, right? So now we're looking behind us at the same time that we're looking forward. Now let's say it's negative two. Right? It's the same thing, but now behind us is zoomed in a little bit. Right? And then keep going, negative 5. Right? It's the same thing, but now it's zoomed in even more. Um, and basically what's happening is, again, is that when something, when this point goes off screen, so when this point goes off screen and behind you, it kind of shouldn't exist anymore. Right, once something reaches 180 degrees, it should have already reached infinity. And so, where does that point exist at that point? It should be, I don't know, I don't know where it should be. That's the thing, right? It shouldn't be on the left side. It shouldn't be anywhere in actual space. So, you know, you just want to multiply it by a large scalar. And I found that negative 100 seems to work. Perhaps you could go even higher than this. You probably could. And maybe should i don't know where the point is i mean theoretically you shouldn't necessarily even be drawing it but because we're using javascript's canvas drawing quad functions we kind of have to draw it somewhere but yeah that's why that's happening set this back to false right and so that way you don't actually draw something because what would basically happen is that if that was set to true and something was at infinity if if you were if this thing is directly behind you and you look back you would see that color right and I'll, i can actually show that hold on let me set back this back to true right so if i go up to this thing and i walk through it the whole screen's going to turn blue right because what's directly behind me at that point is that pillar right but since every single point is behind us, we know that we shouldn't be seeing that, which is why we only do it when everything is behind you. 
I hope that explanation makes sense. But now those are some improvements, but um, we want to make it so that the objects are actually appearing um, in the right order. It's going to be kind of impossible to do it for polygons unless it's on a pixel by pixel basis. And if we do it on a pixel by pixel basis, we kind of have to change the way that we're drawing to the screen. So that's what we're going to have to do in our paint screen function. Um, we're going to drop in uh, these two lines in a new function called set pixel, which we're going to be messing with in a second. But just to quickly explain this, Basically, we want to draw our own image to the screen. We want to put our own bitmap that we create and put it on the screen, our own picture. Uh, and so the way that we do that is we first, we create image data um, from the canvases width and height, and we put it into an array called image data, right? We use the set pixel to set all the pixels in the way that we want them. And then at the end, we put the image data back onto the screen. Right, and so how does that pixel work? Well, okay, so you give it the image data array, you give it an X position and a Y position for the pixel, you give it its red, green, blue, and alpha values for the color of the pixel, and based on those, it just puts those in the array, and it just changes the value within our image data array. So it's quite simple. And so rather than having our render quads draw everything to the screen, we're going to have to do this all manually, but we're going to have to probably gut some other things first too. Okay, before continuing on, I just want to let you know that what I'm about to do doesn't work. Or at least it would work uh, if I could take advantage of GPU, but I can't really do that in the way that I want to. And running a 3D engine entirely on CPU causes the frame rate to go crashing down. But I want to explain that what I was doing in the last video is something called the painter's algorithm. You take all your polygons, you figure out how far away they are, and you draw them from farthest to nearest. Now, I was talking about z-buffering, which is pretty similar, except it's on a per pixel basis, which is what I'm going to be trying to start to implement. And I don't even get there. I get to the point where I'm filling uh, the polygons myself, and I realize that doing that on all the polygons I want to draw is just way too slow and way too taxing on CPU. So we know this corner, this corner, this corner, this corner in terms of where they are in 3D space because that's initially what we knew when we projected them onto the screen. Um, but we don't know, say, right here, we don't know where this is in 3D space, we only know where it is in 2D space. And we need to know where it is in 3D space, so that way we can have an appropriate value for the distance to it. So on the right here, imagine this circle is the player. Uh, these yellow lines are our lines of sight. This black line right here is the screen. And over here, this black line is our polygon that we're trying to draw. Since this is from the top down, the left corner goes to here. The right corner goes to here but a spot that would be in the middle, right, would be here. So I thought to myself, okay, well, let's just write this as an equation of a plane, and let's get this point and this point, and then draw the line from it, and have that be the equation of a line, and then do some like math to figure out how these points intersect. Finding the intersection of a line and a plane, we need our line in parametric equation form, and we need the plane in this other form. So then I do all this math here, where I find the cross product of some vectors. Then you gotta like know how cross product works, and then for the line, you gotta put it in its parametric form. And you know, I take notes, and these are my notes. This is all the math that's involved for just finding this point. And considering that we have to do this for every single point on the screen, there's two million of these, I don't think this is gonna fly. This is gonna be way too slow. So instead, I'm gonna try, I guess, a really naive approach. But first, let's modify the way that we're drawing things. And then if we 
we try to draw all eight pillars? Oh boy. <clears throat> now it's really lagging. Okay. Yep. Oh boy. It's even slower now. Um, mm. Well, apparently trying to run a 3D engine entirely on CPU may not be the best of ideas. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem like uh, JavaScript can naturally access GPU. There are hacks to be able to do that. Apparently people can use like CSS transforms or something. The way that you're supposed to go about doing this is by integrating WebGL. Now I guess I could continue to use the painter's algorithm because according to Wikipedia it does work pretty well without artifacts. Um, and you know it does work pretty decently well but hey there's an artifact right there and apparently there are other ways of doing things that are quicker um, and one way of solving the painter's algorithm I guess as well um, could be to use this Newell's algorithm um, but then I'd have to like learn that so after that <laughs>